I think the drawback is obviously they play in the same division as the Braves, and the Braves are one of the favorites to win it all. So clearly the pathway is a little tougher, but this is basically the same team that we've seen like the past few years. They've got plenty of experience. They've been knocking on the door to winning a World Series, it feels like, for the past three years. So I like the Phillies <sighs> as well. Is there anybody else you like? Like, obviously, the Dodgers are good, but I don't yeah. like betting on the Dodgers or even the Yankees because it just feels like it's built into the number that this is a team that people want to bet on. And also, too, like, I know the Dodgers. I understand why they're plus 350. I understand why are the favorites here. But I also will say that this is not different from any other year. And, yes, they're probably more loaded this year than they have been in previous seasons, which is saying something. But I also think there's something to be said for figuring out how to win it. And for all of the years in which they've just gathered all of this talent, they have one title to show for it. And so for me, this is a team that continually has disappointed in the postseason relative to the talent that they have on their roster. So if that's the case, then I need more than plus 350. I get it, but I, I don't have any interest in, in betting on them at that number. Okay, so I got to uh, further down in my notes because I had a long spiel about the Orioles, and I was like, Chelsea, you've been droning on about the Orioles. Maybe you should shut up. But here's the sabotage factor. They signed okay. Craig Kimbrell to be their closer. How many games during the postseason have you watched <laughs> where Craig Kimbrell came in to close and you thought, oh, no, here it comes. Oh, here it comes. They're going to blow this game. Uh, is this a sabotage factor for you? Yeah, it absolutely could be because last year when Felix Batista would come in a game, it was lights mm -hmm. out, right? We knew, okay, yeah. Felix is going to come in. This game is over. I, no, that is not how I feel when I think about Craig Kimball coming in. So I'm hoping, and I think the Orioles are hoping, okay, a change of scenery will do him good, and then he reverts back to being the pitcher that he was a before long time last ago. season. Yeah, a while <laughs> back before last season when every single With time he came in a game, you're like, you're like, oh, no. Kimbrell again? So, I honestly, it's the one thing that really terrifies me. And the Orioles are going to be able to outslug a lot of teams. But I also think that they would do themselves well to, based on the early returns from Craig Kimbrell, if that's not working out for them, then they need to, before it's too late, before they get near the postseason, before they end up in a spot where they're in a jam and they need him to perform, if they see signs that he's going to still be that guy that we saw last season, then they need to move on or make some sort of move or at least have some sort of plan in place. Plain and simple to the point. Otani is saying that his former interpreter, um, you know, point blank, did this under the table and did this without his knowledge. Jenks, are you buying this from Otani? Do you think this is the real story? I mean, for now, I'll believe him. I will take him for his word. I will also, I am not someone who is going to take speculation and immediately make some sort of assumption without any sort of proof whatsoever that he is guilty of sports betting or being associated with someone who is sports betting illegally, which would maybe by proxy make him guilty. Because I do think we live in a time where it's easy to throw out accusations, right? Void of evidence and say, oh, well, he must have done it or she must have done this. I do believe in due process and the truth and facts. Now, you have to remember that the sports book involved here when these initial allegations were made, this sports book is under investigation by federal authorities. Major League Baseball is investigating what's happening here. So until I see more, I'm willing to give Shohei Otani, based on the facts at hand, the benefit of the doubt. But I also think at the same time, this is just the very beginning, and we have a long road to go down before we know everything that happened, or at least enough to know that either he's guilty of something or that we should exonerate him. I don't know a ton about Otani's relationship with his former interpreter, but why do you think he had access to his bank account? I think this is the question I keep coming back to. Because, like, there's yeah. not a, a language barrier when it comes to numbers, right? And he's mm -hmm. not his financial guy. I wonder how he got access to this. It's, it's a good question. And yet, at the same time, you hear stories like this 
all the time where guys will give away money or they give people access. Think of how many, think of it this way, and maybe, and maybe this is the wrong way to look at it, but think about how many times you see a close personal friend or a family friend take someone's money or a financial advisor Baker Mayfield. take an athlete. Baker Mayfield comes to mind right now. He has a lawsuit, I believe, against members of his own family for bilking him out of money. So, and millions of dollars. So it's not a crazy idea to think that, well, if this was someone he was very close to and very, and someone that he trusted immensely. I mean, initially this guy was supposedly hired because he was a friend of Shohei's. They go back a long way, even though this interpreter apparently lied on his initial resume. But if he trusted this individual, it's not crazy to think, okay, maybe he trusted him with some of his money, just like a family member of someone is who is famous might be trusted with money it i don't think we have enough information to know exactly what is going on here but it certainly wouldn't be potentially the first time we hear about a trusted person in this someone in someone's circle or a financial advisor or family member bilking them out of whatever money is coming their way i don't think we have enough information but it's plausible for sure why is it that many of these teams are willing to trade down is it just posturing or is it the fact that maybe this is a top heavy quarterback draft where it's williams daniels may and then there's a drop down after that when you're talking about maybe a bo nix a jj mccarthy or michael Penix jr i think it's both uh, i think this is one of those situations where of course they're saying this because they want to see what kind of package they can get if potentially they're not super sold on one of these quarterbacks. So it's like when you scroll Instagram and somebody's going on and on about some product that they absolutely love, and then you see at the bottom, hashtag ad. You're like, oh, yeah. they had a certain motivation here, and it was money-based. Doesn't that mm -hmm. feel like the case when any single team says anything about the NFL draft? They're trying oh, yeah. to stir the pot. They're trying to drive the market. Oh, that's that's absolutely right. I, I just when I hear room rumors like this or I see stories like this, like, oh, we're 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 willing to move away from our pick. Why wouldn't you always have that mentality? Do you know what I mean? Like, even if you're yeah. dead set on we need a quarterback or we need an offensive lineman or whatever your position of need is, why wouldn't you always be open to trading down just in case? Just in case there is another team out there that loses its mind and says, you know what? We really want this guy. Oh, they're open. Let's make an offer because you can't hurt yourself by saying, hey, we're open to it. Yeah, why not? Maybe someone will just do something really stupid and just throw us a ton of draft picks and then we'll get something even better. So if if I'm a team with a top pick in the NFL draft, I would always say, even if I'm really not, just with a slight possibility that I can take someone to the cleaners, yeah, I'm open.